What's up, New York? In a month, we'll be celebrating our fourth anniversary, but it feels way longer than that because so many things have happened. So let's go back to how it all started. We were a group of product people, engineers, and marketers, all working in the smartphone industry, and all had ideas on how things could have been done better. But I don't think any of us thought about actually doing something ourselves, because creating a smartphone brand seemed like such a difficult thing to do. But back in 2013, the smartphone industry was not in a good place. It felt like Android brands competed on who could have the most features, but they didn't really care about design or user experience. So that's why we were all using iPhones. And we realized what a great opportunity we had here. What if we could combine the openness of Android with Apple's focus on design, polish, and user experience? I mean, there must be Android users out there who also care about these things, right? So in December that year, we announced our ideas to the world without even having a product. We also announced our tagline, never settle. And to our surprise, a lot of people seemed to agree with us. They signed up to our community, they talked to us, and they supported us. Of course, there were also the skeptics who felt like we talked a really big talk and we couldn't actually deliver. We had no idea on how many would actually buy our product, so to control risk, we only made 1,000 phones in our first batch. And because we hadn't tested the phone globally, we didn't want to roll it out too quickly. So we created an invite system. You had to be invited by a friend to be able to buy our phones. And because we wanted our very first users to be the most loyal, we had a program where you had to sign up to smash your phone and upload a video to YouTube to be eligible to be selected as one of the first 100 people to try our first product, the OnePlus One. It was kind of designed like a religious ritual where you had to make a sacrifice to be able to join our movement. But in a week, 140,000 people actually signed up. And when signups were over, we surprised people by telling them that instead of smashing their phones, they could actually donate them to charity. But we didn't tell them until after the signup because we wanted to test their commitment. Nevertheless, many people still insisted on smashing their phones anyway. So if you search OnePlus Smash the Past on YouTube, you still find plenty of videos of people smashing their phones. So here's a sample of them. potato gun I will be using to shoot the Galaxy S5. So we have potato all over the back cover. We've got potato all over the screen. Our first product became wildly popular. People were selling invites on eBay for as much as $400 in the beginning. And to be clear, they weren't selling the phone. They were selling the right to be able to buy them. It got to a point where we were like, hey, let's not let these assholes make money. Let's sell the invites ourselves and donate the money to charity instead. So we worked together with eBay and the UNICEF TAP project on selling invites for the OnePlus 2. And we had, original, we had originally projected to sell 30 to 50,000 phones in year one, but we ended with almost 1 million. And that's really a lot for a new brand. It also made us feel like we were already successful, that the hard work had paid off, and that we'd proven the skeptics wrong. In fact, we became so confident in ourselves that we started to ignore the feedback from our community because we thought that we had already satisfied them, and now we had to move on to a more mainstream audience. So with the OnePlus 2, we decided to remove NFC, despite our users asking for it, and on top of that, we decided to use the Snapdragon A10 processor. Early on, we knew that the thermal performance of the A10 wasn't very good, but with our newly gained cockiness, 
From our successes in our first year, we were confident in our abilities to handle the ATEM processor through software. In the end, we couldn't build a good performance profile on the OnePlus 2 where speed and temperatures were balanced. Either it became too laggy or too hot. And in the end, the product wasn't received well. With the OnePlus 1 and OnePlus 2 being flagship phones, we felt the need to enter the mid-range segment so more people would have access to our products. So we made the OnePlus X, and it was a great product, but it moved us further away from our community. Recently, we asked one of our users whether they liked the OnePlus X, and they said yes. And then we asked them whether they'd buy it, and they said no. It turns out that our users chose OnePlus because we made high-end flagships, not anything else. So the results of 2015 weren't very great. It seemed like whatever we said or did was wrong, and we attracted a lot of criticism during this year. So as a result, we stopped communicating with our community because we lost confidence in ourselves. But there's a silver lining to this story. We learned the lesson of humility. We were lucky to have come out of this year alive. We no longer thought that highly of ourselves and began listening to feedback from our community again. In 2016, we went back to the drawing board. We focused on flagship phones, fast performance, and quality software. We reconnected with our community again and started asking them for suggestions while using their input to improve our product. And that was what Brian was talking about earlier. This led to the creation of the OnePlus 3 and the 3T, products rated by consumers and the press as two of the best phones of that year. So after 2016, OnePlus was back for real. And earlier this year, we released the OnePlus 5. It represented everything that we'd learned and was our most complete phone ever. It's been received positively by both the users and the media. And here are some comments from our users. And here are some comments from the media. So we talked a lot about our history, but, I know, but now it's time to bring it back into the present. I know a lot of you are excited about a particular announcement that we're making today. We don't believe in new and different technologies if they don't provide a meaningful user benefit. When we make a product decision, we ask ourselves, would this technology enable us to release a superior product? If the answer is yes, we should do it as soon as possible. Like software, hardware is always changing. If you had a great software update, you wouldn't wait half a year just to release it. So why would you wait with hardware? It's about delivering the latest technology today. And this is our approach with the T-Line. But what does T actually mean? To be honest, our team just had a little bit of fun. There's a certain other company that has an S-Line, and S plus one equals T. And hey, we're one plus, right? So without further ado, this is the one plus 5T. Open your eyes. The things you see today are tomorrow's future history. If you're not a part of the evolution when the new changes, you'll fall behind. Technology is always in motion. It is our nature to see it, capture it, share it. The innovations of tomorrow are being possible today. Open your eyes. Can you see it? So what do you think? 